We talked about it during the warm up, but the definition of absolute value is at the top of your page. Okay, and we talked about the definition stating that absolute value is distance, and that distance is how far the number is away from zero. Okay, since absolute value represents distance, it's always a positive unit. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. So here's the graph of that answer, okay? So if I had solve, which is like the first one, the absolute value of what is 3, the answer would be 3, as it's 1, 2, 3 units away from 0. And it's not only a positive 3, there's another number whose absolute value is also 3, or is 3 units away from 0, and that's the other side of 0, negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So over here, this answer, we can just substitute in front the plus or minus, and we're done. So then number 1, solve for x, the absolute value of what number is 9? Plus or minus 9. Now if we look at question number 2, it says the absolute value of x is equal to a negative 14. Can you ever have the absolute value of something be equal to a negative? No. So the answer is the empty set, where somebody asked me, that was on your midterm, what that meant. So this means no solution, or you could put the zero with the line through it, or you could write no solution. Okay, so pay attention to what's on this right side. If it's a negative, there's no solution. You don't need to do any solving. Okay? Solving absolute value equations. All right, this next part. To solve an equation of form, n times the absolute value of a equals b. So when there's a number out in front of the absolute value symbol, Without a plus or minus, that's multiplication, okay? When there is a plus or minus, we still do the inverse operation, okay? And our first step is going to be to isolate the absolute value of A. So you want that by itself. The important thing is, what has to be true again about this B? What type of number does it have to be in order to solve it? Positive. So it has to be greater than zero. If it's not, there's no solution. You don't need to move any further. How many solutions for an absolute value expression or equation? Two. So after this step, we need to set up two equations. What's inside of the absolute value symbol stays the same. So one equation is A equal to a positive B. And the other one is a equal to a negative b. We solve both equations. And we check for extraneous solutions. What's another word for a solution from last unit in quadratics? roots. Okay? So they could say find the positive root, find the negative root. So they're only looking for the positive answer or the negative answer, meaning there's both a positive and a negative. Okay? They could both be negative or both be positive, but it wants um, the negative or positive it, if it specifies. If not, in this case, we need to find both. Is the absolute value part isolated? What do you have to do to get it by itself? Nope. So it is isolated, okay? There's no, if you look at the absolute value brackets, there's nothing else attached to it, correct? Everything's within the symbol. So that means it's isolated, okay? There's no 3 plus the absolute value of x minus 2, 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2. It's just the absolute value of x minus 2. Nope, and I want to see this next step. You don't necessarily have to draw the lines, but the two equations, so you'll often see me um, circle or put this cloud-like shape over it to note it's right at this step 
you make the two equations. So it's x minus 2 equals 6, and x minus 2 is negative 6. Again, this is the only side you're changing. You're not doing anything to what's in the symbol. Okay? Solve them both, and what do we get? So we get x is 8, and x is equal to... I don't mind if you write your answers separate and just circle. Okay? You can put it in set brackets for a solution set. That's up to you. But now we have to check. So I'm going to check x equals 8, x equals negative 4. To check, you substitute in the original equation. So is the absolute value of 8 minus 2 equal to 6? Yeah. 8 minus 2 is 6, and the absolute value of 6 is 6. What about negative 4 minus 2, the absolute value of that? Is that equal to 6? You've got to do the operation first. So order of op says to simplify what's in your operation symbol. So the absolute value of negative 6 is 6, and that checks out. All right, if we look at number 4, find the negative root. Some of you may see, once you solve the two, which one's going to be positive, which one's going to be negative. So you don't have to solve them both. You can, but if you can tell which one's going to be negative, you can just stop there. Is the absolute value isolated? Yeah. Yes. So we can go ahead and set up and solve both equations. So I set it equal to a positive 9, and then I set it equal to a negative 9. Can you see right now which one's going to end up with a negative answer? The one on the left or the one on the right? On the, right. the one on the right. So you can just solve the one on the right. Subtract 1. 2x equals negative 10. Divide by 2. And x is negative 5. And looking at numbers 5 and 6, the absolute value expression is not isolated. Okay, It's not by itself. And number five, what's going on between the three and the absolute value of x plus six? What operation is that? What's that? How would you, it's multiplication. It's three times the absolute value of x plus six. So I have to undo that multiplication with division. So it's the absolute value of x plus six equals, Matt was 24 divided by three. Good. Okay? And that's where I make that. If you see that part in my notes, you see that little cloud around that equation? That means it's isolated and you can break it down into your two. So now it's x plus 6 equals positive 8, and then x plus 6 equals negative 8. We're over that halfway point. I'm okay with you not showing me the minus 6 on both sides. Okay, so if I were to subtract 6, what's x equal to here? 2. What's x equal to here? Negative 14. Okay. And then the number 6, we actually have to do the inverse of two operations to isolate. So what do we do first? In reading this, this is 4 times the absolute value of 3x minus 2 plus 8 equals 36. I would subtract 8 first, then divide by 4. And I'm okay. 36 minus 8. What's that? It is 28. <coughs> I'm okay if you just show me this next line without subtracting. And then the next line would be what after dividing by 4? 7. So this is where I'm going to break it up into the 2. So I have 3x minus 2. Don't change that to a plus 2. 3x minus 2 equals 7, or 3x minus 2 equals negative 7. So add the 2 here, and we get 3x is equal to... Nope. Oh, wait, oh, wait, never mind. So you're, you're at the end? Yeah. 7 plus 2, 9. 9 divided by 3, 3. And then over here, uh, add the 2, and 3x is equal to... I'll write it this time because... We get negative 5, which is not divisible by 3. So you should leave it as an improper fraction. 
just to go back and double check these real quick, if I plug in the 2 here, 2 plus 6 is 8, absolute value of 8 is 8, times 3 is 24. Absolute value of negative 14 plus 6 is a negative 8, absolute value that is a positive 8, still works out. Over here, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7, absolute value of 7 is 7, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 8 is 36. What about 3 times negative 5 thirds? What is 3 times negative 5 thirds if I'm substituting this in? Does this work or is it extraneous? What happens in the 3's when you're multiplying? What can you do with the 3's? Cancel them out and now I have negative 5 minus 2 is what? Negative 7 times 4 or the absolute of negative 7 is a positive 7 times 4 is 28 plus 8 is 36. So they both work. Even for those questions, and that's why we just spent time going back and plugging them in, even for those questions where it doesn't say to check and you give me an extraneous solution, you'll lose credit. You need to be going back in and mentally plugging it into the equation. You don't have to write it out and show me, but you're responsible for checking it in your head or on the calculator to make sure that it does work and you don't have an extraneous solution. Okay?